Today's video is a little bit of a double header because we're going to talk about bandsaws, but we're also going to do the first in our series of Made for Magnolia. Bandsaws are incredibly useful tools, which is why we have six of them. Starting from the smallest, we have two in the shutter shop that are used for making specific cuts with fixed guides. Then we have three basic craftsman bandsaws, one in the shutter area that's used for a wide variety of things, one that lives in the knife making area, and one that is in the wood turning area. The granddaddy of them all is our 36 inch bandsaw, which is what we're going to be using today. Right at eight years ago, we delivered our first products to Magnolia Market in Waco. Since then, we've delivered just over 80,000 pieces, covering almost 40 SKUs, many of which were designed right here. By both volume and longevity, the farmhouse planks have been our biggest product with them. And all of these were made using the 36-inch bandsaw. One interesting fact about the 36-inch bandsaw is that we spent just as much money rebuilding the guides and the tires on the saw as we did buying it in the first place. When we are creating a product for our larger clients, we are constrained by several things, one of which is we have to be able to reproduce it in large quantities over time. That means we are restricted in the lumber that we use because we have to be able to resupply. While we often come across batches of usable old lumber, we seldom use them for our larger clients simply because we would run out. This limitation on lumber means that we have to come up with processes to make our products look the way we want them to look, starting with standard lumber mill lumber. All of our farmhouse planks are made with a standard grade of pine, which is referred to as furniture grade. Many people mistake this to mean fine furniture grade, but that's not what it is at all. Furniture grade pine, as a grade, is used for making frames for upholstered furniture and thus will have lots of knots and defects. The basic process of making farmhouse planks is like many of our other projects. It goes chop saw, straight line rip saw, glue rack, and coming out of the glue rack, our rough blanks have quite a bit of glue on them and unevenness. Unfortunately, that means we have to take them to the planer. Once they go through the planer, they have this nice smooth surface, which isn't at all what we want. So the next thing we're going to do is mark the shape that we want on our board, go back to the straight line rip saw, and then to the band saw. Once we get to the band saw, the process is fairly simple at first. We cut the end, We cut the handle. And then here's where it gets crazy. Just when you think, hey, he's using the bandsaw exactly the way he should be, look at this. Wow, that looks dangerous. What 
What in the world is going on here? Really, it's a pretty simple idea. Most of the time when you're looking at rustic, rough lumber, what you're seeing is saw marks. We simply came up with a way to put saw marks on after we've milled the lumber to a specific size and shape to make a product. Although it may look dangerous, it's like any other saw operation where as long as you understand what you're doing and make note of the dangers ahead of time, it's perfectly safe. Over time, we have done 24,000 of these boards without an injury, but that doesn't mean that we're not very careful all the time. Once all the sawing work is done, we use an angle grinder to finish off the handle, and then we use a pad sander to knock down some of the roughing that we just did. Once the sanding is complete, we use our go-to finish, a Van Dyke Brown from General Finishes. which we frequently cut by 50% with water. We then use our normal food safe finish, which is mineral oil and carnauba wax to finish off the planks. One thing that is important to note is that most furniture waxes are not food safe. So anytime you're using a commercially made finish that's going to be in contact with food, make sure you read the label and the MSDS. Hopefully, the big takeaway you'll get from this video is that although there are standard ways to use tools, sometimes you have to think out of the box to get the results you want for the product that you have in mind. If you limit your designs to what is normally done, you're not going to come up with anything new. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you want to see more of what we do, hit the subscribe button, here's a couple more of our videos, and if you're ever in the area, come and see us in Decatur, Texas.